Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's iteration of the At Risk International Global Risk Intelligence Insights. Uh, my name is Cooper McGill. I am one of the protective intel analysts here at At Risk, uh, and I am joined by Ross Hill, our director of intelligence. Uh, so, kicking off this week, uh, following the FBI search uh, of Mar-a-Lago last week, uh, there has been a pretty notable increase in uh, online extremist activity. Uh, the FBI and the DHS actually issued a joint bulletin on the matter that was released internally, as well as to uh, a number of other different law enforcement agencies and, and government organizations. Uh, this bulletin comes on the heels also of a an August 11th uh, attempted attack at the FBI Cincinnati field office uh, in which an armed individual attempted to uh, enter the field office. Uh, they were stopped and confronted by armed agents. Uh, the individual then fled the scene, uh, ultimately resulting in a shootout with police that left the uh, individual dead. Uh there have also been a number of armed protesters uh, at FBI and other government buildings, uh, again, following this FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, so it's, you know, it's thought that the risk is particularly high right now for law enforcement agencies and government officials, uh, as well as those, you know, who may be perceived to have uh, ideological differences uh, to some of these folks on these extremist uh, forums and platforms. Uh, some potential escalatory events uh, include a number of things, uh, but in particular, any additional legal uh, actions related to this prior search, uh, such as uh, additional search warrants carried out, uh, any arrests, et cetera, uh, any inflammatory statements uh, by public officials that may have uh, the ability to incite violence, uh, either directly or indirectly. Uh, the spread of any additional uh, widely known or agreed upon conspiracy theories related to the search, uh, as well as any attempted or successful uh, DVE attacks that may inspire copycats. Um, so this will be something to watch as we move forward here, both in the near term and coming into the uh, 2022 midterm elections, which may serve as another trigger point. Uh, I will now pass it over to Ross Hill. Uh, thanks, Cooper. Uh, so author Salman Rushdie was uh, stabbed several times whilst on stage at a literary, literary festival in New York State. Uh, Iran's supreme leader uh, had issued a fatwa to kill Rushdie uh, over 30 years ago uh, because of what he deemed blasphemous nature of a book called The Satanic Verses uh, that Rushdie wrote. Um, and then over the years, the bounty for killing Rushdie has actually risen to over $3 million. Uh, the suspect in the attack appears to have sympathies towards Iran. Uh, he reportedly posted pro-IRGC messages on social media platforms. He had a fake driving license in the name of Hezbollah's leader, Hezbollah being a US designated terrorist group linked to Iran. Um, but Hezbollah and Iran deny kind of any direct links or knowledge of the attack. Uh, but it has been praised in Iranian media. And obviously, Iran has clearly incited violence against Rushdie uh, for a number of years. The attack came uh, a few days after an Iranian man was charged with plotting to kill former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Uh, the suspect there is believed to be linked to the IRGC and living in Iran. He apparently attempted to pay some individuals in the US about $300,000 to carry out the murder of Bolton in, in the DC or Maryland area. And that plot was likely seeking revenge for um, the US strike that killed Qasim uh, Soleimani, which was uh, a high-ranking Iranian military commander. Um, interestingly, the suspect in the Salman Rushdie attack also apparently had pictures of Soleimani in his phone. Um, and also, uh, Iran has previously been accused of inciting violence against US officials, again, likely in retaliation for Soleimani's death. Uh, there was some reporting last year of Iran having some kind of hit list. Uh, but when you look at the attack and the other plots, um, it sort of indicates that Iran doesn't really have much capability to act directly in the US. 
Um, and so if we did see any further incidents, it most likely be similar to the Rushdie attack, kind of low capability uh, Iranian sympathizer rather than anything kind of coordinated or organized. Um, but I think we should probably also think that Iran inciting violence rather than carrying it out directly may actually also be an attempt to try and limit any direct links to attacks that might take place. So there's some kind of plausible deniability around it uh, for, for any kind of potential response. Nevertheless, there does seem to be kind of a credible risk to an individual targeted by Iran, um, although that probably is quite low. Um, and then just a brief update on Ukraine. Uh, fighting remains concentrated in the east and the south. Uh, that's likely to carry on for some time. Don't see that changing too significantly. Uh, we're seeing attacks by Russia, counterattacks by the Ukraine, but nothing too decisive. Uh, the biggest concern at the moment is around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Uh, there's been some shelling there. Both sides accuse the other of carrying that out. Um, but the risks of an accident are obviously very high if that continues. Uh, Ukraine actually said it will target uh, Russian soldiers that are stationed there. Uh, the UN's called for a demilitarized zone around the plant. Um, outside of this, we've seen several grain ships leaving or preparing to leave Ukraine. Um, that's since uh, the agreement a couple of weeks ago that um, allowed grain exports from the country. Uh, that should be overall positive uh, for global food supplies. It might take a little bit of time to kind of trickle through, uh, but we don't see it having kind of any impact on the conflict overall. Um, we see uh, President Zelensky in the last few days saying Ukraine had tried to propose different formats of peace talks with Russia, um, but they haven't made any progress. Uh, also last week, China's ambassador to Russia called the United States the main instigator of the crisis uh, because of NATO expansion and said that Russian and Chinese relations were basically the best they had ever been. That's some of the strongest public support we've seen from China towards Russia. Um, and it's very likely to be in, um, in reaction to Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. Uh, Russia also strengthening ties with North Korea. Uh, but overall with Ukraine, we just see the prolonged conflict is the most likely scenario at the moment. Uh, that's it from us this week. We hope you enjoyed the content and we'll see you again soon.